Hello, clinicians. This is Ali Nase, and welcome to another case-based learning tutorial. I'm uh, happy to be joined today by Dr. Ilya Murr, a graduate of the Penn International Program and a practicing uh, dentist in Moscow, uh, Russia, who's uh, been kind enough to join me today, despite the time difference, to talk about a wonderful case that is done. Dr. Uh, Dr. Murr, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Well, you've done a, a great case. I had a chance to review the case in advance. And uh, I will just kind of let you go uh, ahead and uh, kind of uh, introduce us to the case that you've done. If you want, I can. I don't know if you have the case in front of you or not, but I can read up uh, some of the information uh, for you. Basically, this was a case. It was a 29-year-old uh, uh, young patient who had uh, come to you with uh, uh, the symptoms of uh, swelling and a little bit of a sinus tract around the central incisor tooth. And uh, you basically set out to try to see if you can save the tooth. I'm looking at a radiograph here that shows a previous x-ray and a core buildup. And there appeared to be a lesion on the side, on the distal side of the tooth. Can you please uh, walk us through this case? Uh, yeah, thank you. Actually, uh, the main... So they tried to bleach the tooth using uh, superoxal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, and she told me this is what this was hydrogen peroxide per se. So probably uh, it, it this fact can initiate. Um, I mean the the cervical resorption. Yeah, right on the distal area, I can see the notch. And uh, you are absolutely right. 7% of um, uh, internal bleaching cases where superoxal has been used has been associated with cervical invasive cervical root resorption. And apparently, unfortunately, it seems like this patient was uh, one of the unlucky ones. Uh, so basically, the symptoms when they appeared to you were just the sinus tract. And I, I can see that you also did the smart thing of, uh, of tracing the uh, sinus tract, and it does point directly with the gutta percha directly to that distal area of the tooth. So uh, at this point, I think you decided to, um, you know, discuss the options of trying to save the tooth or removing it, uh, and then uh, proceeded to um, to try uh, to save the tooth using a conventional retreatment and repairing of the resorption. Correct? Yeah. According to what I what I saw, I I, I thought about to go surgical and remove the resorption, I mean the resorptive tissue, or to, do, to try to do it through the, uh, through the root, I mean to do not surgical retreatment. Actually sinus tract showed me that this is non-vital non -vital tooth and actually this is periradicular periodontitis. So my idea was to try to fix this problem to remove microbiota from, uh, from the root canal space, to put calcium hydroxide and to see what happened. And that's what I did. Uh, so I partially yeah. removed the gutta percha, put some calcium hydroxide. Actually, I found the perforation. You can see the, uh, you can see. Yeah, you have the intraoral uh, photographs of the bleeding from the side of the tooth. Yeah. So I, I I just realized that this is perforation that was made by resorption from external side, but. Now resorption was stopped, so I decided to to manage it as a, as a just just a, as a lateral perforation. So I put calcium hydroxide to calm down the situation and ask the patient to call me uh, two or three days later. And she gave me a call and told me that sinus tract disappeared and everything uh, was fixed, and she felt much better. So in two weeks, she came for the second visit, and I opened tooth up and saw the perforation side much dry, no bleeding. I, 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 I just cleaned the perforation side and saw the bone, uh, the bone on the other side of the perforation. And the, the very important point that there was no communication between oral cavity and uh, perforation side. So that's why we decided to to fix the problem and to treat this tooth. 
That's great. And obviously, yeah, part of the reason having the sinus tract was uh, in showing that the communication wasn't through the sulcus and it was actually through the sinus tract outside. So you place calcium hydroxide inside the root canal in order to reduce the bacterial biomass in the tooth. And then a few days later, you came back, removed the calcium hydroxide, and at that point, put, uh, attempted to repair the resorption with a bioceramic material, correct? Uh, yes, actually, I asked her to call me two days later, but she, uh, she came two weeks later. So two weeks with calcium hydroxide dressing, and then I, uh, then I opened it up for the second time and saw this picture. Um, so I cleaned all the canal down to the apex, and and um, the the hard decision was how to how to seal the perforation, what what material to use to do so, um, because it's too close to oral cavity. So you know, it's may, maybe it's better to, to use jerry straw, or maybe it's better to use MTA. Um, but I decided to go for. Uh, BC party. Right. I can see that. So the putty was placed at that same time of the retreatment, correct? Or was it placed at the time of the um, obturation? No, I decided to put BC party at the second visit and to go for obturation at the third visit. So I, it, um, this gave me advantage to, to check the setting of uh, BC body, and also to see if tooth is uh, if patient feels better. So if all all all, uh, all symptoms disappear, I mean. So then, uh, on the final visit, what you did is you uh, basically completed the obturation and uh, proceeded to uh, uh, restore the axis opening using the bonded composite restoration that I can see here in the notes. Yeah, exactly. But the, the very important point was to check the setting of a BC body. So I put it a little bit, a little bit more than you see on the on the picture, and then I removed removed it with bore. That's actually, I agree with you. That's a really great idea to always just overbuild it a little bit, and once it sets, to just kind of shave off a little bit so that it, it, you end up having a nice flush uh, kind of margins. That's a great trick. And I can see on the six month follow up, you have excellent uh, periodontal uh, healing and the area around it. You have a beautiful uh, obturation and you seem to have basically uh, saved this tooth from extraction. Yes, and the patient is, is really, she's really satisfied with, with my uh, treatment and I was very satisfied with the result. Uh, no, I, you, did, you did a great job managing this case from the beginning to the end. Chose the right um, uh, treatment plan here by doing the retreatment, uh, you know, getting rid of the whole source of the bacteria and then internally repairing the tooth and then following it up with a great restoration. It was, uh, in that sense, it was minimally invasive and it was very kind to, uh, uh, to the tooth and you ended up getting excellent results and that really is a wonderful uh, case. I congratulate you on this case. And we look forward to seeing many more cases from you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Ali, and um, have a great day. Absolutely. From uh, Moscow, uh, Russia, uh, via live connection, uh, Dr. Ilya Murr. And uh, for Rewildendo, I'm Ali Nase, and I hope you found this information helpful.